This weekend I'm completing my 10th flight lesson and 7th flight hour. How's it going? Am I talking to ATC? Have I landed the plane yet? Tune in and learn how my road to private pilot is progressing. Alright, I've flown four of my flight school's five Cessna Skyhawks. They are all Skyhawk M's except for one, which is a Skyhawk N. Despite them all being M's, the panel's a bit different in each one. So there's a bit of an evolution of panels, and each time I get into the uh, the left seat, there's a bit of a game of Where's Waldo, trying to figure out where the gauges have moved. <laughs> but uh, after a minute or two of disorientation, uh, I'm usually back on track. I've had a Thursday, Friday, Saturday lesson this weekend, and that's the rhythm I'm shooting for. The weather's been awesome. We've got fantastic skies with scattered clouds around 5,000, so plenty of room for flying around, and it just looks surreal up there. This weekend my flight school opened their second runway, which is a grass strip, and it was really cool holding short at the hold short line and watching an airplane land on the grass strip right in front of us. We did a lot in Thursday's lesson. We did slow flight, power off, and power on stalls. I did my first landing uh, and go around. And we also did engine out and emergency descent procedures. If you look at the flight track, there's a lake roughly at the 11 o'clock position. And just southwest of that is a rectangle. And that's our emergency descent. So we started with an engine out procedure. And he said, all right, find a spot to land, uh, hypothetically, right? So I picked out this field over here. And we headed for it and then started flying uh, a descending pattern around it. As we were descending, we switched to an emergency descent. Now, engine out is just power idle, best rate of glide, which is not that different from a normal descent. An emergency descent, though, is a 45 degree angle of bank, and we were pitching for 120 miles per hour. Uh, so you are pulling G's as you are spiraling around, descending at an alarming rate, flying very fast, 120 miles per hour felt very fast for a Cessna Skyhawk and the ground is coming up to you very quickly. When we finally leveled off, uh, he said, what'd you think? And I said, that was stressful. And he's like, no, that was fun. And I thought, we have a different definition of fun. Although I have to admit, we came back on the follow-up flight lesson and also did another emergency descent and that was actually fun. So now <laughs> once I knew what to expect, it wasn't as terrifying as the first time that we did it. Winds were variable which meant that the runway in use kept switching, and that's why the track is such a mess over the airport, because we had to pay attention on CTAF and uh, keep adjusting based on the runway that everybody was using. Prior to this week, my instructor's been handling the flare and touchdown for the landing, but on Thursday, it was my turn. And it was a hard landing, I admit. It was a uh, slam on the ground, and we really jostled. He didn't seem too phased by it, but I was like, oh, <laughs> I, I hope I do better on the next one. I also started using a kneeboard for this flight, uh, we do need to talk to ATC during our flight because we're in a Tursa and uh, we're starting to use checklists. So we're doing emergency procedures. Uh, plus it's just uh, handy to uh, have a place to have a cheat sheet for speeds and stuff like that. So I'll show you which one I chose. So first things first, here's my pilot's log. And it felt good to fill up my first page. And if you look at the flight hours, you'll see that they are gradually going up. And I think that's because I'm getting more efficient at my pre-flight. So I'm spending less time on the ground. Here's the kneeboard. It's the Flight Outfitters chart kneeboard. It's nice and small. It's about 5 by 8. I've got a couple blank sheets of paper. I've got my cheat sheet with all my frequencies and speeds on it. I've also got a cheat sheet for passenger and departure briefs. The other reason I wanted a kneeboard is for organization. So I chose a trifold uh, to hold pens. I need, you know, I have reading glasses, I have sunglasses. I've got a spot to put those. On the left hand side, I've got a spot for my phone and anything else that I want to drop into there. Uh, but this is nice and small. There's some big knee boards and I wanted to keep it small and simple. I put the entire thing into my headset bag along with my pilot log and pretty much this is my flight bag and all I need to bring to the school. So fast forward to yesterday's lesson and yesterday we had just an amazing sky. You know, once again, we had scattered clouds around 5,000 feet. So plenty of room to maneuver around for us, but flying in those conditions, I mean, it just, it looked amazing. This was a uh, 5 p.m. flight. The sun was starting to get low and uh, from the air, you know, it was surreal. On this flight, we spent a lot of time focusing on slow flight and stalls. We did another emergency descent, which was actually more fun this time. 
and I'd previously been doing all the CTAF calls and had just made my first ATC call on the last flight when we were going back to the field, but for this flight, it was all me. So here we are, here's my first uh, calling up ATC, which is wilkes -Barre approach, to uh, get ourselves on their radar. wilkes -Barre approach, 739er Echo Hotel, uh, climbing through 3,000, three miles north of Wyoming Valley, heading to the practice area. Hello for 739er Echo Hotel, wilkes approach, wilkes altimeter 3014, ident. 3014, ident, uh, 9 Echo Hotel. November 9, Echo Hotel, radar contact, three miles north of Wyoming Valley Airport. 9 Echo Hotel. So a little nervous and briefly forgot my tail number when I first keyed the mic because, in fairness, it is a different tail number every single time I fly. But not too bad. And I have to say, it is really cool to go afterwards to liveatc.net and hear your own voice on one of the ATC recordings. So when we came back to the field, uh, we did one touch and go uh, and then one full stop i did both of those and um <laughs> they were mixed the uh, the first one was much gentler than yesterday's so we didn't smash the plane down on the runway like i did yesterday so that went really well and then uh the second one we ended up uh crabbed a bit you know we had a crosswind going on and i just didn't do a great job of straightening out the plane so we had a bit of side loading when we landed and that was very abrupt but we're still alive Next lesson is today in about six hours. We've got some light rain today. There are clouds though around 4,500 and winds are light. So you could still fly in rain. We'll see, it might be my first time flying in rain as long as the clouds, wind, and visibility cooperate. Other than that, in my last video, you heard me mention that my class three medical has been deferred and I need to uh, wait for the FAA to review it and get back to me. And that unfortunately is probably going to be a slow process. Uh, we'll see, but if I maintain this three lesson per week pace, which I'm trying to do, I'm probably going to outpace the FAA decision, which means that I won't be able to solo, uh, but we'll move on to other dual instruction things. And, and there's plenty of those that I can do with the instructor while we're waiting. Lastly, if you follow this channel, you'll know I'm a flight simmer. And I like to talk about how the sim is different versus the real plane. And probably the biggest thing for me, you know, in these first 10 hours of flight time is that uh, it's it's overwhelming. Uh, there are so many variables happening at the same time. You know, the airplane is moving on six different axes and you've got multiple controls. Uh, and there's definitely moments of frustration, you know, where uh, your instructor saying to you, okay, you're going too fast, you know, adjust your pitch to get your speed right. Okay, now you're descending, all right. You know, adjust your power to get your uh, vertical speed right. Okay, now you're not flying coordinated, so get on the rudder and you know step on the ball okay now your nose is coming back up <laughs> so, so you're like always chasing after something and everything is like it has to be so deliberate you know because you it's all new to you you know it's not instinctive so you have to think about every single thing that you're doing um in response to it and i'm just starting to feel that some things are moving a little more to automatic you know i found myself just kind of moving the yoke without thinking about it uh, as I was looking through the windscreen. And that was helpful because that's like one variable that you're not thinking about. You know, your hand is sort of just moving the flight control uh, to give the yoke input and you can kind of take your brain and focus a little bit more on, okay, what do I need to do with the rudder to keep myself coordinated? So I, I know that'll come. That's just part of the learning process. But I would say the uh, the first 10 hours are really hard. You are just like saturated with tasks and thinking just to do basic things like flying the airplane in a coordinated manner and maintaining your altitude and getting all of your speeds right. Uh, and then, you know, when you're flying the pattern and coming in for landing, you know, there's no pause button. Everything is happening very quickly. And uh, you have to just, you know, keep hitting all of your uh, your speeds and your RPMs and, and your numbers. Um, to bring yourself in. I will throw the flight simmers a bone though. Uh, it helps, it definitely helps. Uh, although uh, it's not helping, you know, that much with like all those variables I was talking about. There's these little nuggets of things that you're like, oh, okay, this feels like it does in the sim and it makes life a little easier. I said turns, for instance, feel, feel like they do in the sim. So I find that uh, turns came very naturally. Um, strangely, I've been doing really well with slow flight. 
Um, and I, I think there's probably some sim inputs for that as well. When we were doing the emergency descent, uh, he uh, before we got into the emergency descent, when we were just doing the engine out procedure, you know, we were trying to uh, work on ground references and uh, know where the field was. And at one point, he had me kind of turn around. I, I think intentionally to say, okay, where where's the field now? And I was like, oh, it's over my left shoulder. It's at the uh, seven o'clock position behind me. Uh, and that's a skill that I got from the sim. You know, I, I commented on that in one of my VR flights in the sim that uh, it took a while to just have like a 3D picture in my head and know where the field was. And as we were doing that descent, I, I just always knew where the field was. So um, that I didn't have to think about it. And I think that helped out. So a lot of these little nuggets kind of like pop up every now and then. My ATC calls still need some work, for example, but... I think I was really helped a lot by having done them a lot in the sim, and my instructor, after I did them on this last flight, commented on it. He's like, oh, you have a, you have a good voice for ATC. And uh, I said, yeah, I, uh, confession, I've done a lot of them in the sim, so I think that's helping out a bit here. If you check the link in my video details, it's a link to my website where I've replicated my logbook. So if you're curious what I'm doing lesson by lesson, because maybe you want to start your own flight lessons and you're wondering how the first 10 lessons will go, uh, go to my blog and you can read it. So I will keep you posted on how it's going. If you like content like this, be sure to click that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, as always, for flying along with me, and stay tuned for further flight adventures.